Hello my friends, my family, my esteemed colleagues. Uh, this video is devoted to uh, women, uh, mothers-to-be. Most childbirths are very painful. And uh, the way how we are being taught in medical school how to guide the childbirth, how to assist, and in general, how to lead a woman to have a safe uh, pregnancy, it's all wrong. Again, on purpose. Every woman should understand that lubrication is very important. And you cannot be lubricated if your plasma levels are low. You get dry, your eyes get, get dry, your skin get dry. So, same will be your uterus. Uh, on the other side, even during the childbirth, um, the, the pelvis dilates, the cervix dilates. To dilate, it has to be flexible. To be flexible, it has to be hydrated, moist and hydrated. The drier it is, it's like a prune, like a dry fruit. It squeezes. No wonder now they, that we have more and more cesarean section. Because why? Women cannot dilate. You cannot dilate because you are dry. You are dry because you, your plasma levels are low, because you are being told not to take salt. We are living in a toxic environment, and the uh, body wants to naturally cleanse. So it will do it as long as there is enough plasma. When it runs out of plasma, then it cannot cleanse and becomes toxic. And most women are toxic. Not only women, people in general are toxic. So before you even plan to have a child, start detoxing so you can hydrate. And all this is going to make it much easier than to have a childbirth. Another recommendation, do not have a childbirth in hospital. Because, again, everything doctor knows is opposite of truth. A woman should never lay on her back when she is giving childbirth. It's unnatural makes it difficult for a child to, in a womb, to turn around into proper position. And also, it is way more difficult to control pain. Uh, if you have gas, and constipation, and gas, and you have a stomach pain, do you ever lay on your back relaxed? You can't. You curl, you lay on your side, you sit and curl down to minimize the pressure. Well, this is a natural position also with a childbirth. Standing, sitting bent over, or the best on all four legs, on knees and arms. Squatting. This way you release pressure on the stomach and baby inside can easily float and turn in a proper position. Another stupid thing they are teaching us is breathe and push, breathe and push. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You should not be pushing until the last moment because you have to allow proper alineation. You have to allow child to turn around. When it's aligning, it's moving, it's creating pain. You cannot push while it's moving. You are preventing the normal movement of the child. So when you have these pains, again, you sit or lean forward, 
and inhale and exhale slowly and concentrate about relaxing. So pain comes, you try to inhale a little bit and then and concentrate to relax, relax, because you are actually relaxing your muscles, allowing child more freedom to do the movements. As child aligns, starts pushing on the cervix with his head. As it pushes, it stimulates the cervix to, to open. You don't push. You allow this process to open. Again, pressure creates a pain, but you inhale again and relax and concentrate on relaxing and opening. This way you are going to control your pain and there will be much less pain involved. And you don't push until the head is already going out. Because child, when it starts pushing, as it goes through the birth canal, it, like a water, conforms to it. So it raises one shoulder, it turns the head, drops the other shoulder, bones are still soft, everything moves, so it squeezes, it aligns itself in the most comfortable position. It cannot do it when you keep pushing. So just stay away from pushing, relax. And as you relax, you will allow the child to properly align and to start coming out. When it starts coming out, when the head starts coming out, then when contraction comes, then you can push because everything is aligned, he is in the proper position. And then you just do the final push, pop, and it pops out. Much less pain. Actually could be euphoric. And a very good idea is to do the whole thing in a bathtub or in, in a pool with warm water. It eases the pain. Once when a child is out, when he's born, don't cut umbilical cord. Again, they, they will not do this in hospital correctly. They cut the umbilical cord right away. And what they do in hospital? Smack the child on ass. It has to breathe. Says who? As long as the umbilical cord is attached, don't worry about breathing. And child will take its time when it's ready. And it will take a breath. When it takes the breath, umbilical cord squeezes. And the child will absorb everything that it needs for its immune system to work correctly. If you cut umbilical cord prematurely, this doesn't happen. And this is why doctors are being trained. Cut it right away. And then smack the kid to, to cry. Shake him by the leg. This process of birth is very traumatic for a child. For mother too, but especially for the child. Because it's aware. And it's coming from protective environment, warm, into cold, hostile environment. So when it comes out, the child should immediately be placed on breast of the woman, of the mother. And she should hug the child and just let it be. Forget about the umbilical cord. You clean the nose, clean the passages. What animals do? They lick the baby. So you clean everything, make sure that nose is clear, that it can breathe when it wants to breathe. And you will see the child will not cry. There is no necessity for child crying because it will be comfortable. It recognizes your heartbeat. It was with this heartbeat for several months. 
it knows where he is and relaxes. Then when it's breathing already, everything is fine, the umbilical cord is, is flat, there is no movement happening through it. You can do it an hour, two hours, three hours, five hours later, doesn't matter. You cut the umbilical cord. But keep the child to your body, with your body, with your breast, keep it warm, keep it comfortable. And listen, because when child is ready to eat, it will make tiny noise. You listen to this and immediately put him on the breast. And this way you avoid annoying crying. The child will not be trained. Oh, if I want it, I have to cry. If I want this, I have to cry. If I want that, I, want, I have to cry. If that would happen in nature, nobody would survive from the noise. Predator would attack it. There is no need for child to cry at all. So you listen. You will feel it. And feed your child. Don't wait for it to cry. Because then you are training this child to always be crying for anything it wants to do. Because understands, well, if I make enough noise, finally they will respond. So everything, what has to be done is contrary to what we are being told in hospital. So don't have birth in hospital. <coughs> Look for proper guidance. They are women who specialize in this and know how to guide. Just research a little bit. And childbirth is going to be a completely different experience. But remember, before you even want to be pregnant, cleanse, start eating correctly. Because every time you eat incorrectly, your child gets it. Okay, not everything because your blood doesn't mix with the blood of a child. In placenta, basically like a meningus in the brain, there's exchange of nutrients. Child has its own blood circulation, mother has its own. But still, if blood is polluted, a lot of toxins come and some go through, especially do not get medicated or take any medicinal remedy during pregnancy because this will get through and it may even make a genetic shift and you may have debilitated baby. Definitely no vaccines, especially not when you are pregnant. And when child is burned, zero vaccines. Don't allow anybody to poke your child with anything. Because the immunity that naturally the child has is the real immunity. It's cellular voltage. And it's high in children, in babies. They are well hydrated. They hold electric charge. They are very resistant. Vaccines are not created for what we are told. They are systematic poisoning. So please wake up. If you eat correctly, your milk is going to be good. So you will nourish your child. Again, if you are dehydrated, there is no milk. So, be hydrated. And your child is going to now receive proper food, which is basically fats and proteins and plasma. This is what milk is. It has lactose, but lactose regularly is not being absorbed into the blood, but it, it is converted into carbohydrate fiber that 
helps evacuation. So things are completely different than what we are told in the school. School is indoctrination, misguided process to keep us dumb. So later on, even when we see something doesn't work, we don't know which way to go to find the truth. Because where truth is, this is always being smeared the most. Keep away from fat, cholesterol, that's bad for you. Keep away from salt, destroys kidney, keep it away from you. Essential things that keep us healthy are being bashed. Unfortunately, this is the life, this is our reality, which now, finally, we are free and changing it. So, do some investigation on this and learn the truth. And you will see, your childbirth it will be much easier, even enjoyable. Thank you for listening. Till next time. Love you all.